Joining us now after Senator Mitch McConnell introduced the issue of what they achieved overnight, saying that it is not a stimulus package, it is an emergency relief package. Joining us now, Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia, a Democratic senator, obviously former vice presidential nominee. Uh, let's talk about what the package has and what the chances are of success in your caucuses and from talking to the leadership, I assume you've talked to Chuck Schumer and the others, uh, Dick Durbin, and whether the votes are there. Is it clear that this is going to pass and can it pass today? Um, Andrea, it will pass the Senate today with, uh, I think, unanimous Democratic support. The bill has come such a, such a long way from the GOP proposal that was on the table um, on, on Sunday for the initial vote. Um, the bill has five pillars. It's support for individuals and their families, support for small businesses, support for industry and large businesses, support for state and local governments, and then critically, a Marshall Plan for our nation's hospitals and health care providers. And in each of those five pillars, this bill has advanced dramatically because we stayed at the table and would not accept a poor use of $2 trillion, but demanded that the $2 trillion be used to help those who are most affected. Now, already, Andrew Cuomo has said that the bill, as outlined, is not enough, that it will actually hurt New York State because it will not cover the $3.6 billion it would get, would not cover the gap that it is already spending. It's not enough for the hospitals, the Marshall Plan. He said the hospitals are now in desperate shape. <laughs> is the Senate prepared and the House, which hasn't even passed this, to do yet another package and do it quickly? Or is everyone going to go home as soon as this passes? Andrea, I was a mayor and governor, and I can't imagine a single mayor and governor in this country who would say this is enough. Uh, but we don't intend in the Senate for this to be everything. As you know, uh, we passed a bill two weeks ago dealing with health care investments, uh, last week dealing with unemployment insurance and sick leave. Uh, this bill, more than twice the size of the stimulus after the 2000 and two, uh, 2008 and 2009 fiscal collapse, is a massive investment in those five pillars. But we recognize there will be some things we omitted. There will be some details that we probably got wrong as we were rushing to try to do something with a sense of urgency, and there will be additional needs. And so everyone is now focused on gathering up the lists of those things, and we expect that there will be at least one more significant COVID package that we will address. But the good news today is, by staying at the table, even as some of our colleagues were getting sick, or their spouses were, or their staffs were, by staying at the table, we got to a bill that makes massive investments in these five pillars in a way that we think is going to be very, very helpful to everyday Americans going forward. And what uh, you're confident about unanimous consent, that there won't be an objection? Because if there is an objection, as you know better than I do, then you could not proceed to a final vote today. As you, you're right, Andrea. So I am very confident that we will get this passed in the Senate today. It goes over to the House side, and then the House is not in session. They'd like to do it by unanimous consent, and that's a challenge. But the good news is, after the partisan proposal was put on the table by the GOP Sunday, we spent the last days not only advocating for Senate Democratic priorities, but we've definitely included the House Democratic leadership to maximize the chance that when the Senate acts, the House can also act quickly. Speaker Pelosi has said she believes this bill is good enough from her standpoint that they should be able to do it on a voice vote, unanimous consent. Um, and my hope is that they will, uh, but I can only really guarantee on the Senate side, you will see us pass this bill today. Well, one of the issues, though, is they have left for the day. They could come back tomorrow under some emergency procedure, but it doesn't seem as though she now has that unanimous consent nailed down to warrant bringing people back, 435 people, minus those who are hospitalized, the three that we know of, uh, bringing them back across the country in some cases. Um, and that is, I'm, you know, again, I have my own uh, bigger than life uh, to-do list right now on the Senate side, I and I can't Understood. completely predict what's on the House side. But the good news is, while the Senate's been doing this negotiation uh, with the White House, we've also been including the House Democratic majority to try to fast-track this bill once it gets through the Senate to get to the President's desk. 
Um, and again, it, it is so much better than it would have been on Sunday in terms of providing the kind of relief to individual small businesses, our healthcare network, states and localities, and we're ready to go on this. And do you have a problem with the uh, Secretary of State again referring to this in scripted remarks on a teleprompter today as the Wuhan virus? And apparently, in a conversation with G7 ministers, the U.S. is insisting on using the U Wuhan phrase at the upcoming G7 meeting, virtual meeting in June. I, I view that as extremely unproductive and unhelpful, you know, again, but I, we're not going to change the way the president talks or the secretary of state talks. They use that language to try to deflect blame. Uh, the, the U.S. started six to eight weeks behind other nations like Australia and South Korea in taking this seriously because at the very top of the administration, the president was saying this wasn't a problem. We don't need to worry about it. The Democrats are creating it. The media is creating it. They're looking to deflect blame. Uh, what we are showing today is we're going to, if the president won't take responsibility, we're going to take responsibility in Congress for injecting the dollars into the pocketbooks of everyday Americans and small businesses and our healthcare network to get us growing again. That, that unproductive language and trying to blame somebody else, that's what the administration is doing. That's not the way we need to approach solving this right now. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.